गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स हाउ आर यू आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर हेल एंड हार्टी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अप द थर्ड पॉइम रैबी बेन एजरा पार्ट वन पेंड बाय रॉबर्ट ब्राउनिंग अ क्लोज फ्रेंड ऑफ एल्फ्रेड लॉर्ड टेनिशन एंड a victorian poet let's first of discuss about the poet who browning was and what were his achievements or the works in the domain of english literature robert browning his life span starts from 1812 and ends in 1889 he is a major victorian poet renowned for his intellectual vigor and psychological studies of human nature in which actually in 1845 he met the poetess elizabeth barrett and the two decided to elope elope here means run away to italy as elizabeth's father was opposed to their marriage means elizabeth's father was against this marriage they lived mainly in italy until elizabeth's death in 1861 after which browning returned to england with his son his noteworthy works are pauline in 1833 dramatic lyrics in 1892 dramatic romances in 1845 men and women in 1855 dramatis personae in 1864 and the ring and the book in 1868 and 9 robert browning was a tremendous influence on the poets of the 20th century such as ezra pound t s eliot and robert frost due to his technique of creating psychological portraits through poetry his poetry may be called the poetry of soul because browning's aim was soul dissection he had an inquisitive and a deeply analytical mind which helped in the search of the causes and sources of human emotions an important trait of his poetry is the note of optimism which springs out of his faith in religion and realistic appraisal of the success and failure his greatest achievement lies in the handling of the dramatic monologue and his grasp of the psychological aspects of human nature now let's discuss the poem Rabbi Ben Ezra was first published in the volume of Browning's poems entitled Dramatic Personae in 1864. Rabbi is a Hebrew word which means one who is learned in theology and religious philosophy. Ben has its roots in the Arabic word Ibn which means son. So Rabbi means a learned person in theology and religious philosophy and Ben means son the poem is in the form of a dramatic monologue and the great rabbi is the speaker abram ibn ezra was a rabbi who was driven by persecution from spain into a life of travel and scholarship he was multifaceted personality a theologian a philosopher a linguist and a scientist a strong believer in immortality he found the second half of his life much more productive and satisfactory than the first half rabbi ben ezra is a long poem which sums up browning's optimistic vision of imperfect this poem expresses browning's philosophy of life regarding both youth and old age browning conveys through this poem that youth is a time of struggle for glimpses of god's omnipotence in an imperfect world 
whereas all days can revel in the wisdom of the spiritual this wisdom comes through maturity and one realizes and recognizes divine perfection behind earthly imperfection it is at this age that one perceives god's unbounded love as well as god's omnipotence omnipotence dear students here means all power means god is all powerful so rabbi ben ezra explores the contrasting problem of faith and doubt spirituality and evolution that troubled downing's victorian contemporaries contemporaries means the authors or the poets of his own age in particular the speaker's rejection of low pleasures of life in the human quest for true happiness projects downing's dismissal of the hedonism in edward fitzgerald's the rubaiyat of omar kayam in 1859 now let's take up the text itself the poem opens like this grow old along with me the best is yet to come is yet to be the last of life for which the first was made our times are in his hand who said a whole i planned youth shows but half trust god see all nor be afraid dear students these beautiful lines are derived from the poem rabbi ben ezra composed by robert browning you all know The poem is a dramatic monologue since Robert Browning was a champion of this device dramatic monologue The great Jewish scholar Rabbi Ben Ezra is the speaker who expresses his philosophy in the poem The great Jewish scholar of the Middle Ages Ben Ezra invites us to grow old in his company he does not regard all days as the worst part of life rather he regards it as the best part of life in his philosophy old age is the consummation of human life consummation means perfection of human life the climax of human life and the period of youth is but a preparation for it man and his his future his life are completely in the hands of god in the hands of almighty the omnipotent the omniscient life was planned by him as a complete whole in which each part has its value and significance for the whole youth is only one half of human life and old age is the other half of it therefore one should not be afraid of old age rather one should welcome it with open arms we should have full faith in god and go through the whole of life including old age without fear of any kind simply because old age gives us experience of life we become more wise more cool more judgmental also because we go through all the ups and downs of life whereas on the other part a youth is a novice one inexperienced inexperienced one 
बिकॉज ही और शी हैज स्टार्टेड द लाइफ द जर्नी ऑफ लाइफ द इंटायर जर्नी ऑफ लाइफ दैट नीड्स टू बी कवर्ड बाई क्रॉसिंग ऑल द थ्रिल्स ऑल द अप्स एंड डाउन्स ऑल द थ्रेश होल्ड्स all the challenges and difficulties in life all the barriers all the obstacles so old age is i think richer more profitable fruitful and of course inspirational here i would like to suggest you dear students we should never ignore the suggestions or the pieces of advice given to us by our parents by our elders by our teachers by our mentors simply because they have gone through numberless obstacles numberless ups and downs numberless thicks and thins of life that is why i think they are better experienced they may guide us in a more beautiful in a more fruitful in a more beneficial way we should listen to them and we should try to obey them comply with their instructions comply with their suggestions because the suggestions are full of experience and if we comply their suggestions or obey their suggestions i think we will never derail from our path we will never go astray in our life now let's take up the next stanza not that amassing flowers youth side which rose make arch which lily leave and then as best recall not that admiring stars it yearned nor jow nor mars mine be some figured flame which blends transcend transcends them all here the rabbi does not find fault with the hopes and desires of youth in youth a man has many desires which may be likened or compared to flowers roses and lilies a youth has numerous desires and he cannot decide which particular desire he should reject and which he should try to achieve like a lady with two full a store of fine dresses he rejects one desire as worthless but later on remembers it and sighs for it means regrets for it he regrets that he rejected it the same way youth is also a period of noble ideas and ideals a young man is not satisfied with the real and the actual but aspires much higher much higher demands much more the desires are seamless limitless unbounded youth is more ambitious 
and of course unrealistic too these high ideals of youth may be compared to stars such bright stars as jav and mars do not satisfy him he yearns for stars yearns here means desires or longs for stars which could combine the glory and beauty of all stars and would be more splendid and brilliant than any known stars however such noble aspirations and ideals are natural to youth and the rabbi sees no harm in them dear students it's quite true if we talk practically with regard to your age now of course if i ask you you are also full of desires aspirations and ambitions and your ambitions may be sometimes unrealistic or may appear to be unrealistic rather to say you are full of energy enthusiasm zeal and dynamism and of course it's quite natural to you you aspire you aspire for more and more and more desire for better and more i think we should but we should be wise in whatever we do we should think before we leap hindi mein bhi kehte hain josh mein होश नहीं खोना चाहिए ऑफ कोर्स अ ब्रेन शुड वर्क ऑल टूगेदर ऑफ कोर्स मूव फॉरवर्ड बी एम्बिशियस बट नेवर बी ओवर एम्बिशियस बिकॉज ओवर एम्बिशियस इज क्वाइट फैटल डेंजरस एज वी सी इन Duncan's murder by Macbeth Macbeth became over ambitious and he murdered Duncan and that was detrimental for him detrimental means fatal dangerous life taking that's all for today and have a nice day thank you